morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you guys are at. I hope you're having a fantastic day. It's Soul Saint here, and we got a bunch of new stuff coming up. I don't know if you guys noticed, we're, we're kind of rocking a, a double green screen variable, so if you look, if I look a little faded, you know, bear with me here, okay? But in in celebration of the fact that this is all going to be something, I believe, is new, uh, a new set of blessings. I think it's going to be that new locked category. We're going to do a breakdown of each of these uh, each of these blessings, give our honest interpretation of it and see where, where it could be kind of valuable or if it is valuable at all. Um, and then we'll go from there. So, with that being said, in the new in the new bracket or the new the, the department of blessings, we have nourish, which is going to be the rare uh, blessing for people to consider. It's a it's going to be under the divinity of harmony, which is going to be the new the new section. Uh, increases the value of the heal granted by continuous heal buffs placed by this champion. Each continuous heal buff placed by this champion restores the portion uh, restores a portion of the destroyed ax, uh, maximum HP. So, continuous heals are typically fifteen percent, and then. Um, Increasing that value, along with restoring destroyed HP, is not bad. Let's see here. At it, it increases the value by five percent. So, if it's if it's five percent of fifteen, that's interesting. Or if it's a straight up increase by like instead of it being fifteen percent continuous heal, it's now a twenty percent continuous heal. That's even more exponential. So, um, if it's the latter and not the prior, that's a big deal in terms of healing upgrade. I don't know if it's uh, which one it is too much. I think it's going to be of the continuous heal, which is the uh, the the fifteen percent. So it's five percent of the fifteen percent in addition to that. Because I, I think if you go higher, especially with the way this blessing goes, all the way up to thirty percent, thirty percent plus the fifteen percent would be like a forty-five percent heal, which is pretty big in terms of healing. Um, instead of it being the fifteen percent plus the thirty percent of that fifteen percent could be a much more realistic amount in terms of like not being over bloated, especially for a rare blessing. Now, it also restores maximum HP from 5, 10, 15 to 30% at 6 star. Uh, where would this be valuable? Let's start there. So, any area where you have destroy max HP, I think uh, some of the first areas I could think of would be like Sand Devil. Um, there's also Hydra, which is probably the most prominent. And then lastly, I believe Fire Knight Hard also does destroy max HP mechanics in the fight itself. Amongst all three of those areas, there's not very often that we're using rares. And that's not to say that that only rares could use this, but for a rare blessing, so anybody that uh, all rarities could technically use it outside of common and, and, and uncommon, um, they would be able to use this blessing. Who, who would this be good on? I, the only one I could think right off the rip when I first would describe something like this, I would say it'd be like maybe uh, support elements from, like think of Elva, for example. Um, she does a lot of continuous heals with her A1, which could be pretty valuable. And then having that restore HP could be a good factor for something like Hydra. Um, I will not lie, though, in the other areas like Fire Knight and, and Sand Devils, for that matter, someone like Elva or the likeness of Elva isn't very common um, in terms of compositions and how they're used. Now, that's not to say they can't be used because there are some teams that use a cleanser in some capacity in their teams. Think of... Uh, counter tech and ally tech having Cardiel in there is kind of a big deal. He's kind of like irreplaceable though because he also provides the ally tech, which is important for that comp. But I'm actually going to pull up a list here and see if there's anybody else that does any continuous heals. We're going to refer to our, uh, Hell Hades as a website. He has a pretty good breakdown here. Um, for any of the continuous heals, Alzgore, I don't really see him using those areas per se. So not really so much there. Battle Kazar, I do see him in some niche comps for Hydra. In particular, to, to kind of benefit from his passive more so than the actual healing itself. But technically, could be a good nod in terms of restoring max HP. Same thing is very similar with Gertuk. They're very interchangeable. Think like Trunda comps, for example. Um, Black Knight, not so much. Although, I did use him early on for team comps like uh, as a Provoker. He does have a Provoker. Uh, although, it's not 100%. He's kind of similar to Husk in the sense that he has a chance to Provoke on his A1. Which could make him a secondary or off off tank for provoking the decay head along with that continuous heals could give you some sustain in there so maybe but i feel like you would rather use a better there are better versions out there than compared to black knight that i would, would prefer to use like just husk alone is probably more incentivizing to use because he brings damage to the to the team a lot more exponentially than i think someone like black knight was and that's a that's an epic versus a legendary conversation there you know duchess duchess is conditional upon reviving champions so there is some value there because she doesn't really do direct healing or any kind of capacity to kind of like inject that in her uh uh, uh, in terms of value her value kind of more so comes from her passive which brings that like mitigation along with like the veil from her a2 along with you know block debuffs and increased attack if you're using a lot of attack type champions so there's some nods there 
Mother Sybil is kind of common in some teams for uh, Sand Devil, so there could be a nod there in terms of like a viable uh, blessing to make her efficiency not only in Sand Devil already existing with the revive on death mechanic, but to give her a little bit of extra love with being able to have the team sustain a little bit better because you have more accessibility to maximum HP. So that blessing does have some categories where it's like very niche and very possible to use, but not overall overly incentivizing, I feel like, in terms of like um, case usage. So that might be something to watch out for. We're going to switch over to the next one, which is called Nature's Bounty. It's another rare one. I think we're going to get two of each different category here uh, or each different rarity within this category. Also amongst the Divinity of Harmony, whenever this champion applies a debuff, has a chance to place an a, a greater version of this debuff. For example, decreased resistance uh, would be a 50% instead of the 25% variant. Think decreased defense, decrease or, or decreased resistance is what, what I said there as an example, but like decreased defense. Uh, what's another one that's also in there? They, they got like lesser versions of weekend, so amplifying the value of that. Uh, this would be also very, very niche, and to be honest with you, I think this has a low ceiling of usage because if you have access to champ, it's all dependent on champion pool, mind you. Um, there's not really many champions that have a weaker variant of their of their decrease buffs or debuffs, excuse me, uh, where you would want to use them, like it, it, where they would just have higher viable or viability over champions that have the uh, the better enhanced version. Think of. Um, like, for example, I, I'm just going to throw one out there. Renegade, I think she has, like, a lesser decreased speed version that, you know, depending on your champion pool, if you don't have accessibility to champions, like maybe uh, Royal Guard, if we're going to go in epic categories, or maybe even Stagnite, for example, um, they have that greater version in their kit laced in there already. I would just rather use those instead of just using Renegade. Now, mind you, that's a very, very specific example because they're both kind of viable depending on your comp and whatnot so i think that's a kind of like a lesser value but like the example would be maybe because you have renegade in that comp for resetting like if you have the seer clear team as a part of that that fire knight normal team you know you can get the enhanced version of her and then just focus on using something else instead of trying to placate having a decreased speed champion laced inside your team then maybe i could see that being useful but that's very very niche and it's almost very microscopic because let's be real there are other champions who just do what renegade for example would do better even without decreased speed, they just do more. So there might be some case users here, but it's very, very small. I think if we're going to open up the conversation, we could probably look at like maybe Sin City, where you are restricted to your champion pool, and that one champion has a really good kit, but that one weaker version, if you had an upgraded version, that would just be like the answer to that fight. That could be a case usage there where that, that's something, but very, very low ceiling. And then also on top of that too, the chance is not actually significant because it starts off at rank one only being a 15% chance. And then at its best form, it's only a 60% chance. So I won't lie, if it's not 100%, it's 50-50 at the end of the day. That's the best way I kind of rationalize it. And in this case, it's even closer towards that 50-50% mark in general. So I think the usage kind of just goes down a little bit in that regard when it comes to that. Um, now on the flip side, if you're if you're working early on in the game, like a lot of people recommend going for like War Maiden, for example. So let's let's bring it back to, to like the earlier days of, of gaming when it comes to raid. Um, I believe War Maiden she does have the decreased defense elevated version of it, but her A1 I think puts the poisons out, and it's the 2.5 percent compared to the 5 percent. Adding her with this blessing for your clan boss teams when you're first starting out gives you the opportunity to place a 5 percent uh, poisonous, and I think that might be. Uh, a not to being really, really useful, and she's a rare anyway, so she can't go any any higher than this blessing, you know, in this category anyway. So could be there. Is there better options? Maybe, perhaps. But I think that this does give a little bit of flexibility and something like that as a regard. So just uh, just a couple examples. There's probably more out there, but you know, I'm just trying to give you like a generalistic approach about some quick ways that people can use it. So let's move on to the next one. Nature's Wrath. It's a, it's the first epic of the Divinity of Harmony. Um, increase the damage inflicted by this champion for every debuff they successfully place. So they have to be the ones that place it. Except debuffs placed by gear sets. So excluding gear sets, any debuffs that they place on their own allows them to do more damage. Um, and it looks like at the first value, it's going to be inflicted by this champion by 2% for every debuff, scaling up to a total of 6%. So there's a cap. And then in addition to that, it goes all the way up to 30%. Now, 30% is quite a lot. Don't get me wrong. That's a decent amount of uh, damage inflicted that it would increase by. Um, and it's five. So basically, uh, for every six debuffs or so on the six star, and then um, every three buffs on the, or every three debuffs, excuse me, on the uh, first star is where it caps out at. 
So the, the cap limitation is kind of unfortunate, but I also think it may, it may be necessary because imagine this, five times 10 is 50%. You're almost doubling by half your damage. Almost, you know, you're, you're, you're scaling up by at least your damage and then half of that on top of that. That's a lot, that's a lot to gain. And, you know, keep this in mind, legendaries can technically also use this. So a very high debuff type champion, or maybe in the right scenarios where they're getting reset to constantly do their debuffs quite a bit, could allow them to do that. Or in a terrain where like there's multiple champions to hit, or multiple targets to hit, where you can place multiple debuffs of the same kind, that could scale very, very quickly and become exponentially overpowered. So I do think that the cap is necessary, but an interesting one to keep nevertheless. The only issue I have with this is that it scales off of debuffs, which have a shelf life and they they have a wind up here so it's very conditional so my rule of thumb when it comes to anything that goes along in this game the more conditional it is the lower the value it becomes because you have to have a setup here which means that there could be uptime loss in terms of doing things now don't get me wrong uptime is or, or setup periods are also very common in raid but like you want to minimize that as much as possible so that you can kind of get in go ham go home basically right so I, I view I view overall conditional aspects of this game to be very niche and very far and few where that could be kind of valuable slash kind of not depending on the scenario right so um, you would need a you would need to have a, a team set in place with this in mind to really kind of capitalize off of it and that could be cumbersome to incorporate depending on what you're working on so not a bad nod though this could be a a way to maybe scale up your damage a little bit more which is never a bad sign to to try to get more output in some different areas too right so interesting let's go to neutralize which is going to be the second epic for Divi divinity of harmony has a chance to place debuffs on weak hits when attacking enemies under poison cloud debuffs so under poison cloud buff excuse me this is hydra just straight up poison cloud the only place i see this buff uh, is whenever you're fighting against uh, the Head of Light, and it's annoying. So being able to place debuffs, which helps you maintain control, um, is very, very valuable in some categories. Now, the flip side, or before we go there, I'm going to read the whole thing, and I'll give you my, my pros and cons of something like this. Um, at rank 1, it has a 10% chance of placing debuffs under uh, against enemies under Poison Cloud buffs, and then all the way up until 6-star, you get up to 60%. So the fact that it's not 100%, at six star is very troubling already because you don't want if you're if you're dealing with poison cloud that means that something may have gone wrong or you are either using like non blood buff uh, composition so maybe you're leaning more towards like the HP burn which still allows you to do what you got to do. Um, anyways, then you, you, something went wrong, right? So this is your this is your 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 catch all in the aspect of like I need to be able to apply debuffs even though this went south. Um. From early game to mid game and late game, as you're developing your champion pool and you're developing your teams and compositions for something like Hydra, I can see hiccups occurring down the road, right? Where like maybe the spawn timeframes, and even as someone like me who I would consider to have more of a late game slash end game account, hiccups do occur. That's the that's the RNG that is Hydra. The thing is though is that the way my comps are, or the way I try to build my comps up, successfully or unsuccessfully, depending on how you look at it, they're designed to 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 not let that be a reoccurring thing so the value of this blessing goes down tremendously let alone the fact that there's it's only a chance and it's not a, it's not a guaranteed aspect so to to use up a blessing slot to give yourself a chance and even then it's not that high it's not like 75 percent, maybe 100 percent. okay you have something 60 percent, it's a flip of a coin at that point you might the 10 percent. it's it's non it's non a non-factor, I feel like, almost, where you're still flipping the coin at the end of the day to try to get something to land through the barrier that is the poison cloud. And then you still have to make those accuracy resistance checks and all the other modifiers that go along with it. If they have block debuffs, it doesn't matter. You know, you're, like, you're still not going to land your debuffs because of the fact that what block debuff does, right? So, in an aspect, I feel like this is probably like a little bit of a, of a, of a weaker blessing to con consider. Maybe if you're early game and even then I feel like there are just better blessings out there that you would rather bank on to give yourself a little bit more consistency in general. Um then 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 banking on something like neutralize because if you're not building your teams correctly, it doesn't really matter. It's gonna keep continuously happening. And then you're gonna have poison cloud be a problem that you're gonna have to deal with chancing every single time it pops up. That's a, that's an issue. I think that's you, you would ma rather focus on building up a better comp than at that point instead of banking on this to kind of compensate, right? This is a compensation type blessing, in my opinion, to do better in Hydra. Whereas the real truth of it, it's a bandaid on a bullet uh, on a bullet hole, in my opinion, where you just would rather build a better team, just build a better team, and that would do 
that would negate this and then you could optimize your teams to do more output for example maybe put in heaven cats where you can get more damage out of it or maybe even that that previous blessing where nature's wrath is something that's more of a play i mean like it, it just there's just better there's just better options so i feel like neutralize doesn't really do as much here in that regard um yeah, I, I I don't I see this one as a miss. I don't I don't see any reason why I would want to invest into something like this. Even early game, I would rather just deal with building a better team, straight up. So not really too excited on that on the second uh, epic uh, blessing you could get on the new divinity uh, uh, divinity of harmony. Let's see what the legendaries are going to bring to the table here. We have harmonic impulse. Uh, fills this uh, champion's turn meter whenever they lose their turn because of fear or true fear debuffs. Hydra still a factor. Um. Fear's not very common in PvP. Um, is fear used uh, incorporated in any other PvE content? I think not so much. No. Outside of wave content, which I don't feel like would justify the need to bring a blessing just for that. So I'm not I'm not really too excited about about the first portion of it so far. Alright, let's see. Also decreases the cooldown of the skill they attempted to use whenever their turn is lost due to a true fear debuff so not fear but true fear because it puts it it puts it on cooldown um so it is kind of like a little bit of a counterbalance to fear in a sense but fear is an uncommon debuff that you don't normally see very very often i think is the caveat decreases the cooldown of the skill attempted by one turn at rank one and it also fills 10 percent of the champion's turn meter at stage five it's 25 percent and it resets the cooldown by two turns and then at stage 6, resets the cooldown of the skill this champion attempted to use. So it's a straight reset. So you don't lose anything there. And you get half of your turn meter back. This is basically Encore's passive. And her A1 slapped into a blessing. Which is not bad per se. But it's conditional upon true fear. Or fear. Now if it was any hard CC. Then I could see this being a lot more valuable in general. Whereas just true fear and fear. Like I said, because it's so uncommon. Lowers the value of this blessing. There are some case uses, but it's very, very niche. Also, we're doing this live, as you guys can obviously see. Sorry, we didn't have the alerts turned off there, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I feel like this is this is this one's kind of a miss too, as well, especially for a legendary blessing. I'm not as enthusiastic about this. Let's move on to our very last one here, Cracking Roots, which is going to be uh, our last legendary for the Divinity of Harmony. This one is an interesting one, and this is the one I saw the first time that kind of made me like, hmm. Let's see. Increases the damage inflicted by this champion to Stone Skin HP. So basically, if they have stone skin, your damage output can in increase from 20, 40, 60, and then 100 respectively for each of the the breakpoints for each of the blessings. 100%. So I don't remember what the defensive modifier or the defensive uh, reduction in damage is for stone skin. If there is even any, or if it's just a straight up shield, defensive wall, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. Stone skin has its own categorization when it comes to this game. Uh, compared to like buff slash shielding mechanics, it's it's different. It's just different. Um, I wonder if something like this would amplify effects that that do benefit from it. And we would have to. I'm in the middle of a uh, run at the moment, which we can stop here. Um, I'm gonna see and read bombs and how they work against stone skin. But I feel like when it comes to stone skin, does this have any application? In terms of getting more output against champions that do have it, does it amplify? I don't think the answer is yes per se. It's just I, I think this sounds like on hit damage to stone skin. So I don't think it works that way per se. But being able to do 100% of the damage inflicted basically gives your damage output and then your damage output again on top of it. So two times your damage, right? Which normally isn't enough to crack open a shield by itself. We're just talking about raw DPS. It could get you kind of somewhere, but I feel like there are other blessings that would just be more beneficial over the terrain of a fight, right? If you can make it past the two turns on the skin, or even one turn, depending on what the scenario is, I feel like you're just better off just being patient and preparing to go an extra delay in turns, right? I don't know how I feel like this one. This one, this one, I would have to see some playtesting to further justify, but an interesting one to play against the mechanic that is stone skin, because stone skin does, does contribute quite a lot to, to a lot of players when it comes to being able to be... Like, especially in Ghost Second Strategies, for example, where you know you're not going to be faster than the opponent, but you know that you're going to be able to hunker down and maybe win through the Battle of Attrition by being able to make it to that, that second turn or that, that first turn so that you can do your do your job, right? Whether it's your damage dealers or your supports being able to help mitigate or help put your team into play, right? So, Stone Skin is very valuable. 
very very valuable and even more so important now in a lot of mechanics especially against like champions that are really meta like now with our mons being able to crack through that a lot quicker does remove some of its viability but i don't think that any hits that i've seen so far have been substantial enough to a point where it does the job almost in one hit where like if you were able to crack through it, you would be able to beat the opponent i don't necessarily see that I don't necessarily see that and i feel like that's where that might be a issue because really well built up champions their their stone skin is going to do do its job and that's kind of kind of where like you just have to sit and wait it out or be able to go through it through like uh negative means so like think allele and one of his abilities georgette where they it can ignore the stone skin and still be able to attack your direct hp um just using some of those as an example or the alternative which has been a lot more reoccurring is where they use like opponents or champions that um have the ability to kind of go through it through hp burn or like bomb mechanics so you know people who place burns or being able to ignite it and explode those burns um give players i think it's on his base form actually on his a2 yeah activates it right being able to do that they they pay it, pair it up with like blessings like incinerate where it just removes the blessing and then does damage to the opponent so you don't have any issues getting through it or bombing it where the damage is like you want to have stone skin so that your bombs do more damage as a byproduct of it so i don't necessarily see if this blessing depending on how it interacts with some of those mechanics i can see a possibility of maybe there being something there but there just feels like there's something better i don't know you guys let me know what you think. Am I misinterpreting some of these uh, these blessings? If so, leave me a comment in the comments below. Um, how do you guys feel about this, these blessing re releases altogether? Do you feel like they're a little lackluster? I feel like maybe outside of one that might have just some playtest viability, I don't really feel enthusiastic about using any of the blessings overall. It's a big maybe on one or two. It's a no on the rest, which is kind of sad to say because we do want to see new, new things that shake up the terrain of Teleria. So, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and always, always remember, stay ascended.